So I saw an article uh, on the web on how to use um, this uh, motion sensor. It's actually um, uh, a sensor that does uh, uh, processing of uh, pitch, yaw, and roll. It does accelerometer and, and quite a few other little features but I was just interested in the pitch, roll, and yaw function. And uh, it was an interesting um, uh, uh, article because what it did was it, it, it used this little module, which was less than 10 bucks. And um, you can um, run the code that it offers and it's pretty straightforward. And if you open up the the serial monitor you'll see that when the mo when the module's connected and you start to move it the the numbers here change depending if you do pitch or roll or yaw and so I thought the yaw portion uh, like a compass would be interesting maybe to put on a on a car bot of some sort and use Bluetooth and maybe capture that data to find out where you actually go uh, as you drive. So that being said, I thought, well, at least that would be kind of fun because there's also a, a compass module you can get, but I'm not sure if I necessarily need that yet. I might do that in the future, but this was uh, inexpensive and I thought it'd be kind of cool because I, I, I originally thought that um, the, the compass function would be good. And also what they did was they, they did a, oops, that actually went too far. Yeah, let's see, let's delete that. There's a second module that you download that uses this program called Processing. And Processing is a program that does a graphical representation of data. So here you're generating data, and that data is roll, pitch, and yaw. And I thought, well, that'd be kind of cool to capture that data and show it graphically on the screen. And then maybe even put it on a, on a robot car and see the car going down the hallway graphically and see what it does. If it goes up a hill, down a hill, uh, turns left or right, I could actually see it on the screen. And this was already pretty done. So I didn't really come up with a whole lot other than um, um, uh, bring up and kind of edit the program a little bit. Um, and so what it does is it allows you to use a module to see 3D representation of what what's actually going on with that module. And so I thought it'd be kind of neat to be able to see the, the, the robot, the, the car turn and pivot going down the hallway. I, you know, maybe if it goes up a ramp or down a ramp, hopefully it won't roll. Uh, but I thought that was pretty interesting to kind of see how uh, that would work. So that's why I kind of uh, went down this path. So that very simply is, is the, uh, the program. Um, I did have to use an older version of processing. Oh, uh, I used version 1.5.1. 1. Uh, the newest version is 3 point something. And uh, you can see some of the data down here, but it isn't really displaying it correctly. Um, you really don't need this information. This is the packet information that actually moves this uh, graphic. Eventually, I also was thinking of taking this graphic and changing the graphic. So instead of being a plane uh, or a car, um, being uh, make it into a robotic arm that it would show me the the arm actually moving. Um, so that might be done in the future too. So I thought that was kind of an interesting program to kind of play with. Uh, graphic representation of data is not my focus. It's the robotics that's what I'm really interested in. But this would be kind of a fun way to kind of show that. So I just wanted to kind of uh, show you that it's out there and I'll include the web uh, link that had the tutorial on how to set this up and I'll include the code and everything that I used and modified. A lot of it I, I stripped out because I just don't use. There was an Excel accelerometer uh, version of, the, of this code, you set a flag. Uh, I'm not interested in that. So anyway, thought it was interesting.
Okay, so here we have the code for um, the Arduino sketch code for the MPU 6050 uh, controlling the the image on the screen. This is uh, this code I actually uh, downloaded from uh, this website up here. You can uh, uh, go to this website and, and you will have to go to this website and see how to set up. Uh, the processing program and the Arduino code, but I just want to give a quick uh, explanation of some of the tips and tricks I kind of found that were problematic for me and then how uh, you can get yours up and running really quickly. So uh, this is the code uh, for controlling uh, the Arduino uh, and the module, not the processing, which is a another program uh, it's a graphics program that will show data graphically and it's called and I don't really particularly like the name it's called processing and it has a an IDE uh, and uh, a developers a developers uh, environment similar to the Arduino except instead of being green a lot of it is black and so um, but go to this website up here and uh, and and check out the code and the tutorial and what it says to do and follow it right along. It's pretty straightforward. Um, this is the code I got from it. I don't know what a lot of this code does. I've whittled a lot of it down. Um, basically, uh, you need to include this uh, I2C development H library, which it tells you in the website to download, and this MPU 6056 axis motion apps. You download that also, and so you go ahead and uh, put those in the library. There's some release notes here. I also included uh, some information here uh, describing where you plug in the which pins you plug the SCL and the uh, analog uh, pin five for the for the uh, SDA on an Uno. I wanted to have that in the code, so that was not there. I added that. Um, there's a multiple uh, defines that are that are done. Uh, there's one for, uh, here we have one for yaw, pitch, and roll, which is the one I use, and then uh, there's also one here, a define for output teapot, which is really should be output plane. I don't know why they call it teapot, but um, nonetheless, uh, there were like three or four others that did accelerometer and a, a Yule or Euling uh, uh, coordinates. I deleted all that because I don't want, even want to use it. Uh, so that made the code smaller. Uh, you come down here, and here's the LED pin for blinking the uh, uh, the LED. Uh, probably could be removed even, but I, I just left it in. Here's some other variables. I'm not really sure what they do, but they are necessary for processing uh, uh, the code and and sending it to uh, the, the the program, uh, the processing program. Here's some other variables: a Euler three, uh, yaw pitch and roll. This probably um, uh, could be uh, removed. I haven't done it yet. Um, I will in my final usage of this code. I'm going to use it for a different program, for a different project. This is important, this line here, because this is the uh, teapot packet 14, which is the actual code or packet of information that's sent to the processing uh, program uh, a sketch to actually turn and rotate the plane. So this is, uh, you got to keep this. You remove that, it doesn't work. Uh, here's an interrupt. Uh, I think it's on pin 2 that I, I'm not sure how this actually works uh, with the program. I guess when you start to rotate it doesn't interrupt, but I gotta first see how this really works, so I left it in. Here's the initial setup. Um, I'm not sure how any of this works per se, to be honest. This fast wire uh, wire begin, I guess it's part of it. This initializes the communication. It's at 115K. I tried to slow it down to 96. It didn't seem to work as well. I did remove this while serial statement here. Uh, looks like uh, it was only for the Leonardo, and I don't, I'm not using that, so I took that out. Uh, here it initializes the I2C device, it tests it to make sure that it works or that it's, conf that it's successful. I thought this was an interesting serial print statement. It's kind of like if true, do this, otherwise false, do this. And it's one line. Um, it's really nice, this little question mark here. I looked that up. That's actually a nice bit of code, so I might use that in the future also. 
So here's some sort of uh, uh, print statement initializing the DMP. That's a digital motion processor that's on the little module, the, 60, the MPU 6050. Uh, if you'll notice, all the print statements are using this F statement, which actually stores it in SRAM. So that's a nice little uh, coding feature there. So whoever coded this did a nice job. They, they really knew what they were doing. Um, you can supply your own gyro offsets. I'm not sure how all this works, and I'm not sure what this test chip, I didn't put this in. This was there. So need to play with that a little bit more. Uh, here's some enabling the DMP. Uh, not sure what that does. This is some um, enabling the interrupt zero. I don't really know why we want to do that yet, but I gotta look into that. Um, here's the packet size or the packet that you send. Um, here's some error processing. I don't know how that works either to be honest. Um, so far I haven't had a fail, so knock on wood, uh, so I haven't really gone through this code. It's worked every time. Um, here it turns the LED pin on. That uh, ends the setup when we come down to the main loop. Um, uh, if, something, if the program failed, uh, cra just stop processing. Um, I did try removing this while statement, and I found that if you remove this while statement, um, this code is required, or else the, the the, the uh, results, uh, the values from the MPU 6050 stop. It'll, it'll run for a couple seconds and then it just halts. So you have to keep this in there. Uh, I guess it's uh, some sort of error checking. Uh, here we come through here and I'm not really sure what all this does. This uh, 1040 uh, code, I, I don't know. I have to play with it a little bit. Some sort of FIFO is important. Uh, first in, first out overflow. Um, I don't know how this all works. Here's the actual printout to the serial port um, uh, for the yaw, pitch, and roll. Uh, this is if you define yaw, pitch, and roll. There's another section here called uh, define output teapot. And you can only use, uh, according to the website, the yaw, pitch, and roll, which shows you the values I showed you uh, in the serial port or you turn it off up above by commenting it out and using just the teapot and here's the information for the teapot um, it takes the the packet and 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 prints it out this right here you you actually need even though it prints gibberish to the screen below the uh, the output on uh, the processing uh, program um, this is that uh, teapot packet 14, which I'll show you above again. This is required for the image to actually move. If you comment this out, the plane doesn't move. Uh, and then here it turns uh, uh, on and off the uh, 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 LED. So what's important is there used to be uh, one, two, there used to be about five or six of these if def statements for different types of output. Well, I removed all that and just kept the yaw, pitch, and roll, which I wanted and uh, the, the teapot, which is really the plane output. And I'm going to probably eventually change this teapot to, say, airplane, or actually I'm going to modify this for a Bobot car, and it'll be a car, output car. So you can display both of these. Um, this would display, uh, and this would display interlaced uh, on the processing um, program uh, sketch output when you do the plane, but it's kind of confusing. So um, I would recommend uh, maybe commenting uh, at least this one uh, out. And to do that, you come up here at the top, and right here there's two define statements. Uh, you only want to run one of these define statements at a time. If you're using just the Arduino, and the website up here um, uh, describes that in depth. Uh, you also uh, up here uh, have to, let me mention this right away, uh, comment, um, uh, I think it's, oh, it's, it's actually in the uh, other sketch, uh, the sketch for the processing. You have, to, you have to put in or comment out what COM port you're using. I'm using COM port 5, so that's what I selected in order for the plain um, code a sketch to read the packet 14 and that was uh, what I was talking to you um, right here to read this data it has to know what COM port to read it on so that again the website describes that very nicely but more importantly I, I need to get back to this um, 
this right here, or this. You only run one of these uh, dependent at a time. If you want to run it on the Arduino code and see the numbers coming out as you rotate the module, you, you, you comment out the teapot and you leave this uncommented and then you run it and then you can see the, see the numbers. Otherwise, if you want to see the plane move, you comment this out and you uncomment the teapot and then compile this code and run it, but you don't open the serial port because then that ties up the serial, the serial port and the processing code can't get to it. Um, and that's really what this website kind of up here uh, uh, describes in full. So that being said, I eventually want to be able to use, uh, uh, augment this code so that uh, and augment the processing uh, sketch code to um, show uh, a car, a Bobot, maybe driving down um, a hallway or something, or navigating an area, and I want to send that data back maybe through Bluetooth um, and take that, basically, I don't even want the, um, the, the, uh, uh, the pitch and the roll uh, portion uh, of uh, this code. I want just the yaw. I want the left and right. So I want to be able to see the car turn left and right in a 3D image as the Bobot travels on the floor. Um, you may be using Bluetooth or, or something else. I'm trying to figure that out now. And as it goes around and drives around, I want to be able to see it uh, actually in a graphical image. That'd be kind of cool. And that's kind of my goal. So I want to get this code out there right away and uh, so that others can use it. And then uh, you can refer back to this when I actually use this code uh, in other uh, programs. Uh, like I mentioned, um, or projects. Uh, like I mentioned, I might actually do something with a, a robot arm where you can actually see the robot arm moving graphically as it picks stuff up. And that's going to maybe use it with a camera and and you can kind of see graphically what it's doing. Because I know uh, to use uh, 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 actual video with an Arduino, uh, it's not so good. So uh, maybe the, I can do it graphically, which might be kind of cool. So that's kind of what I'm going with this, and uh, hopefully somebody out there will take this information and maybe um, do more with it. So uh, please subscribe and, and like my videos. Um, I'm not really going to respond um, to any questions or anything. I, I just don't um, have the ability, YouTube makes it difficult, and I don't have really the time. Um, you can leave messages and questions like a forum if you want, and maybe others will answer. Uh, I'll leave that up to um, the viewers, but stay tuned, watch, maybe something will um, come, come out in, in, in all this and it will help you. I will not be putting this code uh, up on uh, CodeBender because it's really not complete and it's not minimized and I haven't commented uh, it fully. So, uh, and a lot of this code that I have right here right now is not really technically all my code or even in, I haven't even really modified it. It's this gentleman's up here. So he did a great job. He gets all the credit. Um, he has a website here for more updates. Uh, I encourage you to go there and take a look at that. Uh, though it's not really super necessary, but uh, you can if you want. So I hope this helps. Please continue to subscribe and watch.